How do we see the seeds, the origins of innovation before they happen? Picasso once said that every act of creation first is an act of destruction. I'd like to tweak that a little bit. Every act of creation is first an act of disruption. I was very excited. Not because of what Bill Gates was going to say, but because of what Greg was going to do. Greg was a student in my innovation course. And um, he had a great, brilliant new idea. And he got it into his head that this was the perfect idea for Bill Gates. Greg decided that the time to pitch Bill Gates on his new idea was at his public talk at heart. My name is David Ricketts. I'm a innovation fellow in the Technology and Entrepreneurship Center at Harvard. One of the benefits of being a teacher is you get to work with and see your students grow. But one thing that I've always been interested in is how can we take the impact that we have on our students and teach those core ideas and core lessons to a much broader audience. So Bill Gates is doing his final wave. I see Greg jump up, he starts wiggling through the crowd. And then he does it. Mr. Gates, that was a fabulous talk. Excellent, I've got something here that I know you're gonna find is a great idea. Greg had the audacity to step out in front of Bill Gates, hand him his proposal, and Bill Gates took it. Bill Gates took one step forward, passed it back to his assistant, and it was gone. Greg never heard back from Bill Gates or his assistant ever. And as we were walking out of Old Auditorium, I was thinking about that comment that uh, Dean Vanke made about how Bill Gates had spent just as much time as he needed to there. And I didn't even see him. Standing right in front of me was Mark Zuckerberg. The entire time Vanke was talking about wanting to find the next Bill Gates, he was there. The next Bill Gates was in the room, and no one saw him. That is what is so difficult about innovation. Obsolescence is the core of disruptive innovations. And if you're not looking at how your products can be obsoleted, you will be the one who's disruptive. I say that every company needs somebody who's focused on figuring out how to obsolete your own products. Because I guarantee you, if you're not at least considering it, there's someone out there who is. One of the challenges with creativity is, particularly in teaching it, is how do you go in front of a bunch of Harvard students and say, you just need to think out of the box. You need to brainstorm. You need to change your paradigm. You need to shift your frame of reference, my friend. Creativity is all about the picture we have in our head. So how do we get a different picture? If we're all forming the same understanding in our heads, how do we create a different picture in our head? I bet your company hires people that think like your people do. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and you just said a few words and they immediately get it and start responding? They get it, right? That's the person I want to work with. I want to get the person where I just say a few words and they get exactly what I'm thinking. You've got the same picture as they do. You're all forming the same picture. This great ability of our minds is our biggest challenge. Because what if that picture's not correct? One of my favorite case studies is with a colleague of mine. He was working with a client who was trying to make their fast food restaurant more efficient. The problem is, everybody you bring in has seen that same sandwich made the same way every day. I happen to know the pickles go on last. The lettuce goes in first. That annoys me because they fill the sandwich with the lettuce. But I know this, if they brought me in here, I've already seen how they do it. I have the same picture in my head that they do. And so Rick was trying to figure out, how can I combat this? How can I make this so that, that they, they get a different picture? Or how can we get a different idea here that's truly original? And so this is who Rick invited in to their creativity session. Formula One pit crew. Innovation isn't about technology. It's about vision. It's about asking what if and imagining the possibilities. What if mom would play video games? That's what Nintendo asked. Who has seen $20 billion? Do you know what $20 billion looks like? I brought it with me, for those of you that are interested. 
Who recognizes this? It's a handheld from the Nintendo Wii. How many of you knew that Nintendo didn't even invent this? The technology in this controller was invented by Tom Quinn. He got together his business team and they realized the game console market was the perfect place to pitch this new technology. So they call up Sony. Sony was the number one in 2000 in game consoles with the PlayStation. Tom flew to Japan, pitched this brilliant new technology. Sony's response, eh, not interested. So Tom calls up Steve Ballmer, Microsoft. And he thought it was a brilliant idea, and he set up an appointment for him to go to Redmond, Washington to meet with the engineering team. Do you know what their response was? And I paraphrase. That's a stupid idea. Well, Tom did what maybe any of us would do if we were still in the game. He went to see the number three, Nintendo. Now, to put it in a little bit of perspective, Sony was sort of the Apple of the day. Microsoft was the Samsung of the day. And Nintendo was the Blackberry of the day. Their sales were plummeting throughout the 1990s. By, by 2000, they were trying to figure out what to do. That's when Tom arrived at Nintendo. And he pitched this amazing new technology he had, just like he had before. However, when he was waving his wand around, Miyamoto and his team didn't see a technology. They saw a bowling ball. They saw how. Within one year of the introduction of the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo was number one. Imagine if BlackBerry introduces a phone this summer that in one year is selling more than Apple or Samsung. That's what Nintendo did. Sony and Microsoft were all asking, how does this help my company? How can I use this? How is this a benefit? That's not what Nintendo asked. Nintendo asked a very different question. They asked, what if? The $20 billion innovation was this. What if mom would play a video game? That is how you recognize new innovations.